Welcome, everyone. Larry Sparks here. We're continuing this series on prophetic words for 2024. Now, before you stone me, me because because Jesse, we could talk this way. I, it's funny. I'm even seeing some people right now saying, all these charismatics with their 2024 prophetic words. Listen, we don't believe in prediction or prognostication or Christian fortune telling. I don't believe that. I think some of the stuff is goofy. I think some of the stuff sometimes, quite frankly, is just like, okay, you said this, you know, for 25 years. However, I do believe God speaks into the times and seasons that we're living in. So can I just be candid? If, if prophetic word for 2024 gets you to watch and listen, please. Again, I believe the word is for this year, for the years to come. I've got my dear friend, Jesse Green here. Jesse is... Well, I was going to say, you're, you're founder and leader of many things, of Saturate <laughs> Global, of Salt Churches, based out of Wilmington, North Carolina. God has used her powerfully uh, for many years, but particularly notably 2020, where you saw an outpouring of the Spirit. I believe a notable move of God breaking out in the beaches of California, which, by the way, California, as we both know, is still feeling the impact of what God launched there. But... Uh, we might talk a little bit about this book, you know, released a year or two ago, whatever. One year ago, yeah. One year ago. And I'm literally reading through it before our interview. I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, every single page, there's something on it that we are literally seeing happen right now. So I want you to understand, yes, Jesse's an evangelist, but please put, put in your heart to receive from her um, from a prophetic voice, somebody who has, I believe, a finger on the times and seasons of what God is saying and doing. So all that to say... Jesse, always a joy. I want to go to you and I want to hear, what do you hear since the Holy Spirit saying right now? Yeah, I'm really excited because I actually have not shared yet with anyone any of these things. Um, I have had them written down. I've been just ruminating on them, praying through them. Um, just had a newborn baby end of November. So had lots of time in prayer and the midnight oil burning <laughs> and um, I'm actually going to preach a lot of this this Sunday at our church, um, as well as at the Ignited Conference at Christ Fellowship. So I'm really excited to share this today. But the Lord is saying a lot. Um, I really believe that 2024 is a year where we really do need to be on our front foot, very expectant for what the Lord's going to do. Um, you know, I do believe that it is a year of a lot of... Um, darkness exposing itself. And I'm going to get into that in just a minute, but I just want to encourage people to um, do not get caught up in the swirl of media, as well as um, the swirl of the enemy parading um, his exploits, because as we know through scripture and historically, that is the prime time for the greatest moves of God. So as a Christian believer, we don't react to culture, but we get revelation from above. And the reason why the Lord gives us prophets and prophetic words for 2024 is so that we are on our front foot. So, um, Again, like what we saw in 2020 on the beaches of California, people were like, you know, did you see that thousands of people saved and baptized on the beach as a response to COVID? And I said, no, the Lord had given us vision for that in 2016. But here's the thing. The Lord is always doing plans and always working out things um, way before the enemy tactics. Um, it's just our job as believers to lean in, press in and Obey. So that being said, um, I, yeah, I wrote that book, Saturate, um, really out of obedience. If you've read Wildfires, Saturate is nothing like Wildfires. I prefer Wildfires as a book. Um, Saturate really is just like a prophetic vision of what I saw in 2020 um, and these seven waves of awakening that are coming to America. And I often find myself in shock how quickly this word is coming to pass. Um, and every time I talk to a prophet, what they're hearing from the Lord is in those seven waves. So I always try to refer back to it. Um, the first wave was the separating of the wheat and the tares, the rising of a remnant, which we saw 
happening in 2020, we still see happening today. Um, and that second wave was a rise of an Esther movement holding hands with Deborah. And now I'm sure today we're seeing lots of that Ebra Dester, e <laughs> Esther Deborah um, conversation happening. I know Lou Ingalls rallying a million women this year in Washington. And, uh, you know, women are really getting this prophetic voice right now in a lot of ways. Um, and we're seeing that start to come together. Um, wave three is a prophetic showdown, which um, I believe we're in the very beginning stages of. Um, so I'm excited. So you can also buy that book, obviously, Saturate and go through it. I really try to break down those things. But I do believe that um, 2020 to 2030, so this 10 year period, I'm just going to talk about this because um, 2024 is obviously included in those 10 years, but 2020 to 2030, I believe is a 10 year um, marking for America. Um, it really is an opportunity for us to be tested. And the Lord is calling this nation back to him. I don't think people all the time realize that America was established as a Christian nation, guys. So don't allow the media to confuse you. Otherwise, this is a nation that was established as one nation under God. I don't know if that rings a bell, but the founding fathers created this nation with the the um, morality that we see in scripture. And this was a place that was founded on a lot of sermons, a lot of the things you see in the constitution, um, in the declaration of independence where ideas formed from sermons. So, um, this is a nation that was to be a place where people could worship and glorify God. And the enemy would love to keep the church silent. So don't take the bait. But I believe that in many ways, um, the church has become deceived in many ways. And when I say the church, I mean you and me. We are the saints. We are the believers. We are the ecclesia. We are the church. And what God is trying to do is to return us back to our first love, which is what revival is. It's that reawakening, that coming back, that, that flame being reignited in you. And so I believe that 2020 to 2030, we're seeing waves of revival, waves of awakening, which leads us to renaissance and reformation. But all of that is so that we would establish this nation again under him. And at the same time, we're seeing a rise in witchcraft, um, so much demonic agendas. I mean, it's like crazier than I ever could have even imagined some of the stuff with the LGBTQ agendas, things that are happening with um wanting to mutilate children, um, Christianity being forced out of schools, Christianity being forced out of churches. Hello. That's like a big problem. But um, at the same time, the Lord will show us who is the real God. And so um, I believe that 2022, um, 2030 is a John 15 era um, I believe that the words of John 15, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Now, we love that as a magnet on our refrigerator, the ask whatever you wish part, but we neglect the parts about abiding in him, about his words abiding in us. And I believe that, you know, the words of Jesus don't just abide without effect. When they take root, they actually produce fruit. Um, and one of the questions I ask all the time is, A, you know, does your abiding actually make you look more like Jesus? You know, when you spend time praying, when you're spending time in the secret place, are you asking the Lord, what are you doing? How can I partner with you? What are you passionate about, Lord? Because our job in 2024, as everyone's getting those words and dreams and prophetic visions, you know, are those things just building yourself up or are they expanding the kingdom? You know, is there a price that's to be paid? Revival without a cost is no revival at all. So it will always cost us. And when we abide in him, when it takes root in us, there will always be an increase of faith and holiness. 
And so sanctify them in the truth, Jesus says. Your word is truth, John 17, 17. So when his words abide in us, sanctification happens and then cultural transformation is the fruit of that. So that is why we're going after revival. We're not wanting just hype, excitement, a feel good experience, goosebumps down your arm. I actually want your heart to change so that he can abide in you. And then his words would abide in you. And then you would repent from living for yourself. You'd stop signing up for the mastermind courses of getting your best life now, but you would live a life of holiness and consecration and radical generosity. And when that happens in the individual, then it starts to multiply in the church, in the ecclesia. And when churches as a whole get a hold of that, that's when we start to see corporate revival, right? And when the corporate revival goes outside of the walls of the church, then what do we see? Reformation and renaissance, right? And so what happens is, is as we are sanctified, as we are transformed, as we are burning, then the Holy Spirit and his sovereignty, right, teaches us how to pray. One of the things about your prayer life, you know, is your prayer life, the kind of prayer life where people look at you and look at your life and say, you know, teach me how to pray. I can see the fruit and effort of your life and see the fruit of prayer, you know, I, I've been asking the Lord, teach me how to pray, God, so that the way that I pray provokes jealousy in other people. When we are holy, we become more like Christ. And that abiding of Jesus's word in us means that the words of Jesus, right, his actual words, like the word became flesh and dwelt among us, his words, his rhema word, his logos words, the living active words, the words written in scripture, they take root in us. They bear the fruit of faith and holiness. And so when you have faith, you can actually believe that despite what you see on the news, despite great darkness, despite rumors of war, right? Despite all of that, when you have faith and have vision, you trust the prophets, you trust the visions God's given you, and you hold fast and stand firm in those things. And so I think it's really important. We realize that 2020 to 2030 is this era, a deeper invitation to abide of holiness of consecration. And so um, I believe that this year, 2024 is a year of John one. And I've been reading John one over and over again. Um, what's really crazy about John one. And obviously Larry, anytime you want to pop in here, feel free, but I'm just going to share this one thing um, and we can, I have, I have a lot to say. I've been praying and studying a lot. If you can tell I am bursting at the seams, but um, John chapter one is like the, the, I think the most beautifully written scripture. Um, it is so eloquent and it is, it's it just, it's amazing, but it talks about, you know, in the beginning of the word, was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And we start to see this um, story unfolding. And it says, and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. So what I want to encourage you today is listen, things are going to get darker. Okay. Like, sorry to say that's, what's just going to happen. But the reality is, is the darkness cannot even comprehend cannot grasp, cannot wrap its mind around what the Lord is orchestrating. That's why we saw thousands of people baptized on the beach because the darkness could not catch up to what the Lord had planned. And so one of the things that I think is so important about John chapter one that I think is really important for today is we see this. We see John the Baptist is out in the wilderness. And what is so important about that is I believe that, and I've been saying this since 2020, I believe that we are in a baptism revival and, uh, you know, we're seeing the same thing. I know at Christ fellowship church, they've baptized over 50,000 people. Um, we've baptized over 15,000 people since 2020. And, um, I think the reality is, is that, um, 
Baptisms are messy. They are undignified. They are a triune moment where Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are met there at the baptismal waters. There's only a few times in scripture you see the manifestation of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's at Jesus's baptism, the Mount of Transfiguration as well. But I believe that what happens is, is, you know, it's an efficacious event, meaning that something actually happens in that water. And you are choosing now to no longer live for yourself, but to go in and be born again and to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we know that Jesus, the one that baptizes with the Holy Spirit, we know that he has sent his Holy Spirit to baptize us. He commands us in Matthew 28 to go out and preach the gospel and baptize people and to teach them to obey all that he commands, right? And so what happens is this, John the Baptist, I love this, they're trying to figure out who he is. We see in the beginning of verse 21, they're asking, who are you? And he doesn't give them an answer. And the word for you right now is this, you don't need to have a bio in this move of God. You don't need to explain who you are or what like or what your qualifications are or what. You just need to know who the Lord is. And John the Baptist says this. They say, are you a prophet? And he says, I am not. He doesn't even say anything more than that. And then they say, they, they say, who are you that we may give an answer to those who sent us? And he says, the voice of one crying in the wilderness make straight the way of the Lord. And I believe that that is the declaration for 2024. This is the year to make straight the way of the Lord. I believe that we do that through preaching the gospel, through revival, through baptisms, through consecration, right? But the Lord is going to expose every hidden thing in culture, as well as what we're seeing in the church. Um, But I believe that we need to prepare the way of the Lord. And I believe that the Lord is doing this sanctification process in in a way that we've never seen before. It is like radical. It's wild. It's spontaneous. And I just want to encourage you, like, let the former things die in the water so that you can be raised with him, like Romans 6 says, and walk in newness of life. And so I have some more things there, but Larry, was there anything you wanted to pop in on with that? Yeah, ones to release because, man, as soon as you comprehend the light, you know, even what you guys saw in 2020 with this, it was how messy, how wild coming off the street. We see that even now. So important that people listen to this. I want Jesse, but there's this lie that we believe it's almost like the people who don't want stuff. That's weird. That's weird. I mean, hostile fire. I burn for the move of God's spirit. Well, you confront that in wildfires and it tries to actually sanitically say, then the, the people won't understand it. We've just, we've navigated with different church culture. Yeah, they have a statement of faith that says, well, we believe in the kids. Well, we don't really allow that Holy Spirit. You mentioned John 1 verse 5. It's literally, the darkness does not, that doesn't stop God. That are in darkness, even though they don't has a way of piercing through school. That's the supernatural move of the Holy Spirit. Really incomprehensible word that just sums up a little bit of what it is. Whether it's what we were seeing with Bible, whether it's you know, the meetings, the old and touch, whatever. Those things sometimes when people are getting touched by God, this can't wrap its mind around it. Those can't 
comprehend it. That doesn't gospel and the power of God breaking through the darkness. So I'll leave, I guess the bottom line there when it comes to our forms and real to look or how they should look because God. Absolutely. Well, and what's so funny is yeah. it's like, um, baptisms are so wild in general, especially our baptisms. It's like people are muddy. They're usually in their clothes, not planning to be baptized. There's water everywhere. And I just even love how prophetic in nature that is. It's like you look physically different. Like your hair is wet, your car gets soaked on the drive home. And it's like something like even in the physical, there is a marking that you had met with God. And that's one of the things I, I love about baptisms. And um, one of the things I'm going to share too is, um, and this is sort of connected, but um, yeah. I believe, and I've been carrying this word since last year, but I believe that specifically 2024, it's going to be a huge marking. We're already seeing the multiplication of this. Um, but the word that I keep hearing is healing for the barren woman. And I believe that the barren woman represents actual women um, that have not been able to get pregnant. And at the same time, the barrenness of our land, places that have been dry, um, something I've said to you since 2020, Larry, is the dry season is a lie. Um, there are no times in your life that you should have a dry season out of you will flow rivers of living water. And so, um, but I believe specifically in 2024, we are going to see an unprecedented amount of miracle pregnancies. Um, I just keep hearing the Lord say over and over again, words about barrenness and him healing barrenness. I believe that Jesus Christ is our healer. And this is a now rhema word to lay hands on women who have been told that they cannot get pregnant and to believe for their healing and miracle. We have on my phone, I have screenshots of over 40 miracle testimonies of laying hands on women that could not get pregnant, um, like impossible situations, and the Lord healing them and these miracle pregnancies. I just got a report from um, the ministry Global Awakening, that they laid hands on people after this word. And uh, there was an account of eight women that got healed and got miraculously pregnant. I believe that this is part of God's prophetic counter response um, to America aborting our children and in the kingdom mandate to be fruitful and multiply. So the Lord is saying, like, no, I will make you fruitful. And where America has allowed the abortion of children and the murdering of children and the worship of these false gods of um, Baal and Moloch and all of that. The Lord's saying, no, those that are barren, that are crying out to, to have a baby to conceive, that they're being healed. And it's so funny because as I've been obeying the Lord in this, um, I've gotten the most controversy about this and about giving people false hope and all of that. Meanwhile, we can believe for someone to walk out of a wheelchair or to be healed of cancer, but telling a woman that the Lord cannot heal their womb is controversial. And I'm just going to say this and, and we can discuss it more, but I'm like, if you're a Christian guys, I'm just going to say this should not be controversial because first of all, Jesus is our healer. Also, if you're a Christian, you believe that Jesus came through a virgin birth. So if the Holy Spirit could descend upon Mary and get her pregnant and she's not even having intimacy with Joseph, then why could the Holy Spirit not heal your womb if we believe that the Savior of the universe came through a woman who never even consummated her marriage yet? <laughs> Well, I, but pretty quickly, how, how I'd love to, to pray for those who are watching right now, women 
uh, husbands and wives who cannot get pregnant. And that controversy is nonsense. Oh, pages of scripture throughout the Bible with Isaac and Rebecca. She did he do? He prayed for her. And the Lord, may I give you other testimonies of how Lord not only opened her womb and gave her Samuel. So I, I, why is this? A, it's a sign of what God's doing. He's a good father, but he's also the God who then just a son. She gave him, he gave her a prophet who changed for the nation. Could it be, Jesse, that desire to actually okay. bring fruit barren land? So finish, finish our who are watching who find themselves in that position. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Isaiah 54 um, has been a verse I've been holding on to, and it says, Sing, barren woman, you who never bore a child, burst into song, shout for joy, you who were never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent, stretch your curtains wide, do not Hold back, lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes, for you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. Do not be afraid. America, church in America, Christian, do not be afraid. You will not be put to shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your Ruth your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. And so Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are our healer, Lord God. And I pray that you right now heal the wombs of every single woman that wants to bring forth a child, that you would heal them now in Jesus name. I come against the spirit of death over our wombs in this nation. I come against the spirit of abortion. I pray right now that we would see life and life more abundantly where the enemy comes to steal from us, to kill, to destroy, that we would come powerfully in the opposite spirit. I pray that we would lay hands on every woman that wants to get pregnant and believe in faith with her for her to conceive. I pray that we would see that the church of God would occupy America in a way that we've never seen before, that we would enlarge our revival tents, we would enlarge our church buildings, and we would not hold back. So Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are strengthening us with your word. You're strengthening us with your rhema word, God. I pray for more miracle testimonies to come in. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that where the enemy has had tactics and plans in this nation, that you are doing the impossible through your miracle working power. And so if you are pregnant, or if you are believing to be pregnant and you need a miracle right now, I just want to encourage you to speak over yourself, Isaiah 54, and believe for God to heal you miraculously. And we would start to see miracles, signs, and wonders in a way we've never seen before this year. Amen. I, I, I did have 25 while you were praying where it says Isaac, half of his wife, because she was childless. I mean, it doesn't even imply that there's significant delay. His prayer and his wife. Were, and, you know, Jesse, I was just thinking, the literal and physical, actual barren wombs conceived. And I believe... You know, Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife, and we pray to the Lord on behalf of a, a, a land that's barren. 
as she was childless. May we pray. But then I love right after that says, I believe, I believe the Lord is responding. Even as you pray, Jesse, I believe he's going to, are going to have testimonies of miracle key that we would also pray for our yes. barren land filled with the ray of the Holy Spirit. Again, I have to, and you, you wrote this, you released this year, so much of what you recorded in this act is supposed to do. A prophetic is not a, it's not, hey, I told right. you so, the prophetic <laughs> strategy on what's coming, how in the sovereignty of God, part to pass, partner with the Holy Spirit in the earth. Jesse, so great for the stands that you and Parker, and it is a joy to continue to partner. We love you, Larry, and thank you for allowing me to share this. It's always a privilege. Thank you.